we need resources and we need support and uh, and we need strategy. Uh, we need to accomplish a lot of things in order to execute uh, our purpose here. But what you get back is far more than anything that you put into those types of efforts. So I got involved. My, my youngest brother uh, has cerebral palsy. Um, and so I was involved up in uh, New Jersey where he lives. Uh, but I was fortunate to, to come across down here in the Hampton Roads market when I moved down uh, in the uh, late 1990s. Uh, I was fortunate enough to eventually be introduced to Kathleen and Michelle. You know, I think the Ability Center uh, is incredibly fortunate because Michelle's been involved with the operation now for, I think, 23 years. I think it's seldom that you see an organization like this whose leadership um, and direction is orchestrated by an individual that is so heartfelt um, and involved from a personal level in the purpose of the organization. And when you meet those kind of people, I think it makes you want to be like that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you see that passion, appealing to your better angels, wanting to be a better person. Yeah. That's yes. right. You want to be around people that make you feel good, and Michelle is that person. Yes, Her she purpose is. and what she does is absolutely incredible. And so being part of this organization wasn't just because of cerebral palsy, or just because of the ability center. It was because I had some mentors for my personal inner self, and I wanted to be like those people, and I was fortunate enough to have uh, great people like Michelle around me. You mentioned uh, cerebral palsy. I have a friend, a family friend, um, and he, he gets so frustrated because he's verbal, but you have to listen very close. Right. And he's ambulatory, but only barely. And he was picked up by the Virginia Beach Police. One of the most frustrating incidents and in, in family history was when he got picked up by the beach police they thought he was intoxicated wow. he, got, he doesn't go anywhere without his id now right and, uh, that was a terrible lesson though but we had the family had to go pick him up at the police station they wouldn't believe that he wasn't uh intoxicated and didn't have id with him unfortunately but um yeah very frustrating because he has a very active and precise brain but a body that will not cooperate that's right in any way yep, you know and and we've talked about that several times how frustrating that is for him and uh, but he still has a great positive attitude it's just that one incident he never goes anywhere without his <laughs> ID. <now. laughs> so that was a that was a positive uh, that a very negative thing that turned into a positive uh, but yeah there's some real frustration on the part of uh, people with disabilities and, and the parents uh, and the loved ones sure. of those people as well. Yeah, you know, a great story around that, you know, and I shared this with Michelle probably, you know, a little bit earlier um, this year, is, uh, you know, you talk about the, the challenges to the parents, and we're fortunate to have Tracy here to talk a little bit about that. But uh, I remember, you know, with my, my brother, I remember coming down here to Hampton Roads and and at the time, I was attending um, Old Dominion University. Um, so that was uh, about 120 years ago. <laughs> but uh, in, in, in terms of you know, the, the challenges, right, of a new college student, no money, uh, you know, working hard to try to make it through, friends with cars and going out and enjoying it. I remember calling my father and telling my father about all these great challenges I was having in my life. Um, I remember my father telling me to, to hold on, just pause for a second, son. <laughs> and I said, okay. Yeah. You know, well, well, I, I have all these challenges. He's putting me on pause. Um, but I could hear the wheels of my brother's wheelchair coming into the kitchen, the creak of, of the house and the, and the ungreased wheels. And I could hear the phone being picked up, and my father saying to me, hey, David, here's your brother, Stephen. Tell him all the problems you have. Oh, wow. All right. And Stephen and his happy Where's the chipper whole, like, voice. Where's the whole call in, Dad? Right? Yeah, that's exactly right. Yeah. Stephen got on the phone, though, and, you know, that bright chipper voice, you know, with the with the stuttering and the dialect and the just, hi, David. You know, he just went, 
All right, thanks, Dad. We got it. So I, I hear you loud and clear. So, you know, it's those kind of experiences that I think, you know, I'm amazed at my, my, my mother and my father and the sacrifices they made taking care of Stephen uh, and certainly my brothers. But, you know, I think that's a good avenue to talk to a little bit to, to Tracy about, uh, you know, her own experiences in terms of, you know, the challenges to a parent uh, and not just the child. Uh, All right, yes. we're going to turn it over to you, Trace. All right. Um, so my son, Ryan, is 26 years old. Um, he does have cerebral palsy, and he is he's in a wheelchair, um, has multiple disabilities, and um, pretty much require, requires total care for everything. Um, but he's also independent and does a lot more than people think he does. Mm -hmm. um, there's a lot more in there than people think. Um, so we foster as much independence as possible. And the Ability Center really comes into play because he has a place to call home where he has friends, where um, he's accepted for who he is. Um, and he, when I, when, when I dropped him off one time, <clears throat> excuse me, for a Thanksgiving gathering, um, I had made mashed potatoes. We, I was chatting with everybody else, and Ryan's pushing me with his arm saying okay you can go home now mom <laughs> it's like i Get got this here. i got this i'm with my friends you can go and i was like okay so Every i was finishing has talking ex has experienced yes. that with so i was child. like all right okay. you don't need me i got it but it was wonderful it made me feel it, it really makes my heart happy um to know that he is safe loved protected and in an environment included. where he can have and fun. he has friends yeah because he doesn't get that like everybody else has friends that come and go or they you know he can go they can go there he doesn't have that but he does at the ability center and when he's off for christmas break or during the summer when he's not there for the summer camp when am i going to see my friends when am i going to see my friends and and it's just like you know it's it's really heartwarming for a parent to see that and that he feels included a place where he feels connected yeah yes yeah. absolutely yeah unlike most kids that can jump in the car and or have a hitch a ride down to the mall or wherever the local gathering place is he right. doesn't have that exactly and so when things happen when we do things because we keep him we're very active with him and we do as much as we can um, so he's gone skiing and surfing and does races wow. and indoor Sky dive. skydiving. Oh, yeah. Oh, cool. <clears throat> so we keep him very active, but then he's like, he wants to share it with his friends. Mm -hmm. So it's it's really really nice, and um, I, it, there aren't enough words for me to express my gratitude for the. So you like center. the center? <laughs> just <laughs> a little, just a little, and we've been around mm -hmm. with it since right. Ryan was about three. Yep. I remember when you, you started at the first walkathon. Yeah. yeah, we were yeah. at the first one at the yeah. zoo, I think. Yep. We boiled yeah. hot dogs in a pot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that it was, was a small. Our, that was the food that was, we had. It was a <laughs> small little group, but it was a charitable event. Huh? Right. Hot it was. In a pot. <laughs> we've come a long way. It was way. so much fun, though. <laughs> yep. So we've been around a long time, and he participates in the summer camp. Um, he does both weeks in the adult day. Um, during the um, two days that he goes to the his adult day program, um, he loves to go bowling. Um, he loves there on Thursdays they go on outings, so he's always up for an adventure. He loves music, so they have someone come in a couple people now right. that come and do music. So that is like his all time favorite, and he is one of the ones mm -hmm. that loves yeah. karaoke, mm -hmm. and he has <laughs> no fear whatsoever. So you put him up in front of everybody he is good Absolutely. to go singing yeah. and oh he wants that mic he all wants the time that microphone. all the time yes oh, we should have brought him in here today he is, yeah. <laughs> yes he is a ham if you're just joining us our special guests this morning are from the ability center of virginia and we were just talking with uh, tracy jones the mom of ryan who is a participant in the program and while you were speaking tracy it dawned on me your son is 26 and I have a question for you, Michelle. How is your program funded? So our program is funded um, by, we're a United Way agency, so mm -hmm. we receive funding from United Way. We receive funding from grants, from local foundations, and also our special events. Um, we have a lot of great um, 
businesses and community leaders that support us. Um, but that is basically how we're funded. And and this work is so important. And the reason I brought up a crass thing like how, where's your money come right. from, right. is so many state, local, and federal programs that children age out of. Right. Uh, whether do. it's adoption or other forms of 